Okay. Big deal. Um, so that's basically the power circuit. Any question guys about the power circuit, you bring the power to the line side of the contactor, from the line to the load side, you go to the motor. Now what are these? These are the heaters. We call them the heaters, guys. They're basically a little wire. When it heats up, it physically, mechanically moves these contacts to open. How does it heat? If the current increase, it's weighted for a certain amount of current, which is a full load. If it goes higher than this amount of current, this will heat up because of the proximity to this, these little, there's a, an, an alloy there. It, because of the proximity, it heats this alloy and open these contacts to control the overload. This circuit, my friends, right here, that we tabbed, I don't know if you've seen that one, you tabbed from here, this is my control circuit. Everything here, my control. Control circuit. I hope that you understand this one at least. For the control circuit, this is very typical control circuit. Typical, guys. The voltage here could be 4160 volt. Look at the voltage. 4160 volt. And this motor is 500 horsepower motor. 500 horsepower motor. Big boy. And from this side, this is a transformer, 4160 volt, that take you all the way to 120 volt. Is that okay with that? 4160, high voltage, takes you all the way to 120. So your control circuit, this is your control transformer, take the voltage from 4160 all the way to 120. On the 120 side, <clears throat> on the 120 side, guys, um, as you can see, you have to ground one side, and then here's my hot. You come over here. Let me use the, the glue here. You come over here. The first thing, the first thing you have to put, guys, this is the stop button. See that stop button, the red button there? That's always shown like this, always at the bottom, always in series. Then you go all the way to the start button. Then you go to the coil. Then you go to the contacts, 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 normally closed. And you to bring the signal back, you have to go all the way back to the transformer. Now, my system is energized with 120 volt, and this could be 5 amp. This could be, this fuse could be 5 amp fuse or 10 amp fuse. <clears throat> now, what the heck is this? You guys remember what Gary used to tell you, the holding contact? So this baby here is the holding contact. How does it work, Spencer? All what you have to do is just push momentarily, push that, that button so that will close momentarily. When this is closed, this will be energized. So we have 120 volt across this coil. Remember that we showed the coil, guys, the coil. You energize it physically, mechanically, it drives these shocks. One, two, three. Now the motor is running, and at the same time, drives this also shot, so it will hold that contact energized. So you can move your finger off that contact. You really don't need this one. If you have a maintained push by we have them, we have them in our lab, guys. A, star, a maintained push by and stop, meaning you push it and it stays there. It doesn't go back. <clears throat> because this is momentary, not maintained, you need a, a contactor that holds it. So this stays on. Now the motor is running until DJ gets sick of that motor and goes and push this spine down. <clears throat> when you push this spine down, you kill the 120 across this coil. Right, guys? There's 120 across this coil. There's no 120 across this coil because I open the circuit. Now what happened to this contact? Open, 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 open. This circuit is dead, and this circuit is dead. <clears throat> this is, you must, you guys as designer must understand at least this circuit. It really is. Basic, very, very basic. I want to bring to your attention how we tabbed, look how we tabbed two phases to feed the control circuit. And oh, by the way, the thing that I didn't tell you is, um, which color am I going to use here? I want to use this. Everything that you're looking at right here, everything that you're looking at right here, this is called your NEMA. NEMA, in this case, probably NEMA 9. There's your NEMA 9. Everything that I highlight right into NEMA 9. So when you look at NEMA 9, guys, you really, all what you're taking out of it is three wires to the motor and three wires into the NEMA. Everything is wired inside this box. Any question guys about this? Any question? Sometimes, Ben, we don't need a transformer here. If the voltage here was 120 and the control circuit is running at 120, do I need a transformer? 
the only reason you need a transformer if the voltage in the power voltage is different than the control voltage. Yes, Brad? You said that you're capping two lines and you can only be capping out lines at some point after that. And that's on the, on the top side of that transformer, you're only bringing in line one, you're bringing in neutral half to other out. You're not bringing two lines in. You tap from the primary side. You just tap one line. You need two. Where's the other side of the transformer is going to go? You're going to, well, you're going to, you're. Well, now you're assuming there is a ground or a neutral. You, you're showing the ground. Yeah, that's on the secondary side. I'm talking about here. You need two lines on the. Here. Do you agree that here you have to tap two? I do now. Okay. Now, on the other side, on the other side, guys, you created your own neutral. You created your own neutral. And this is, by the way, this is called separate drive system, believe it or not. And this is the only place in the NEC code book, the only place in the NEC code book <clears throat> where separate drive system, see that little, because we went to the ground, you don't have to go back to the grounding electrode system because this is exception for control equipment. So you took two phases, you created a, a separate drive system 120. You created a 120. What's a 120? 120 is uh, basically a hot and a neutral, but the neutral have to be grounded. So that's why I went down and, and ground. I don't have to ground. Well, you, by code, you have to if the voltage is that high. But it, had this been 24, 24 volt, had this been 24 volt, you don't need to take it down to the ground. <clears throat> if the voltage here, guys, I'm sorry, if the voltage here is higher than 50 volt, if the voltage here is higher than 50 volt, on the secondary, then you have to ground it, ground the neutral. Any question is, this is the single basic control circuit that you can imagine, Mr. Herbert. Now you graduate from here and somebody tells you, he said Chad did not cover it and Gary Ryman skipped over it. Okay. <clears throat> Contact, we're gonna go all the way to they, they go here, guys, through how they, they, they design it. We care less about the design. Um, here's the contacts coming out of that. Um, here's another. Okay. The second one that I'm going to show, if you guys, this is showing really um, the, same, the same way, except we're using th these two. Can you guys see that this, there's a magnet starter? Bush button, the same circuit. Here's how the power came in. Here's the coil where the coil is located. This is how we physically wire them. How we physically wire them if they're not in the same enclosure. If these bush pines are not in the same enclosure, this is in one location, third location, fourth location, and fifth and sixth. That's how you physically, mechanically wire these uh, contactors. And I hope, guys, you did that one with us. Um, if not, and anybody wants to go wire them, guys, um, I'll take you there and wire them. Just FYI, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five YouTube, <coughs> uh, I taught schematics at night for Dunwoody. And I have five YouTube um, videos, five, 10 minutes each, about how the system works and in a real lab, how they are wired and running. If anybody wants to go look at them. If you're not sick of Chad, probably you're sick of me anyway. Um, so. How does it work? As I said, you push the button and you energize all these contacts. Anybody you guys does not know how the system works? Seems that this is normal. I'm gonna go all the way. <clears throat> Look at this here. So everything is open. You push the button. Can you guys see the push of the button here? Uh, when you push the button, it closes the contacts. Now we are up and running until Brad comes and open pushes the contact here. Now when you push the contact here, you de-energize everything. And you go back to to step number two. Or the, 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 the first step. I don't like to talk about this one. These are guys um okay. Any question guys about this? This is basically what you're gonna be doing all the time in terms of motors and all the stuff. Um, one thing I want to bring to your attention, guys. Brad, would you would you think an air handling unit would work like this, though? 
Would, would you want an air handling unit, guys, to wait for Chad to push the bike to start? No, you would hope not. You would hope not. So instead of pushing the bike, you know what they do in, the, in, a, in an air handling unit or something? That device here, you can have, um, I can't remember how the thermal, thermal contact right in here. You can have a thermal contact wired in here. So if this is, if the temperature goes to a certain value, uh, if you're doing cool, for example, if you if it, the temperature is very hot and you need to cool the building, this will close, energize the coil, shut this down, and start the cycle. And the only this is only for emergency. This button becomes emergency button only, only for emergency. You see the fire coming out of you, you push the button and close it. Long story short, guys, there are two types of control. A control that need need one of us to interfere to push the button. That's this one. The one that does not, the auto control. The auto control, instead of having a push button where an individual need to push it, you can have um, a thermostat to control the system, or you can have um, a temperature switch, which is thermostat. You can have an occupancy sensor. I can have an occupancy sensor right in here, guys, that can drive this motor on and off. Or what you do, interface the occupancy sensor right here, when it closes, energize the contact, the contact, the coil, the coil now shuts these down and wait for another signal to turn it off, whatever signal you want it to be. And that's what they do, uh, chillers and boilers and air handling units. You can't believe the amount of control they have in the interface. Okay, here's forward. This is, uh, this one, guys, please. This one is called foam voltage reversible. Oh, by the way, if uh, I forgot to mention, the ones that we just covered, it's called full voltage non-reversible. The one that we just covered, it's called full voltage non-reversible. This is called NEMA full voltage reversible. Why full voltage? Do you see any reduction in the voltage here? Do you see any transformer to reduce the voltage? Any BFD, anything here? Nothing, it's just done switch. Full voltage reversible, why it's reversible? They use two magnetic starters, guys, and by switching in three-phase system, I, I'm sure Gary told you guys, to reverse a three-phase uh, motor, what you, all what you need to do is switch two phases. So here's phase A, phase B, phase C, come into the motor. If you make A, C, and C, A, that motor will go reverse. Is that dangerous or what when you wire? Imagine if you don't pay, pay attention when you wire an air handling unit and, and, and you uh, the sequence is A, B, C, and you uh, give it C, B, A, that air handling unit is going to go the other way around. So that's um, that's a big deal. Okay. The same thing, guys, my friends. I want to bring to your attention this time two sets. This is my forward contact. This is my reverse contact. Um, and, of course, the same motor. I can run it forward, reverse. My control circuit is my controller is here. This is NEMA full voltage reversible that's my full voltage reversible with these two at the top <coughs> how does this work guys when you when you when you do full voltage uh, reversible guys when you reverse it you switch three phases uh, two phases now what happened what happened if you reverse and forward the motor at the same time remember you're switching two phases if, the, if you push the button and reverse and forward at the same time and you don't have interlocking, you short phase uh, one to phase three. You have a, a two phase short. To avoid this, the smarter than Chad, to avoid this, they introduced electrical interlocking. Do you see this R and this F? These, called, you know, uh, these relays here, this is just for safety. You really do, don't need them for the system to work. Just to prevent Mr. View to push the two buttons here, to grab these two, push both of hand on this and this at the same time. You would do something like this, but you point you would. If you do it without these two contacts, guys, you have just created a two phase, uh, phase short circuit. Without these two contacts, with, without these two contacts. That's what they call it, guys, electrical interlocking. The mechanical interlocking, some of these, <clears throat> some of these guys, when you push the reverse, mechanically, physically, you, you, you close the reverse, you open the forward. It's the, like this. You, you close the reverse, the uh, forward is open, and you do the opposite and you move electric, mechanical interlocking. They mechanically interlock with each other. So they have mechanical electrical interlocking. 
All this to prevent CHAD from creating a two-phase short circuit. Two-phase short circuit on a motor 4160, guys, you burn half of your building. Okay, how does this work, Spencer? If you look at this, uh, look at this. Why do you think the stop, guys, is with both of them? I need to be able to stop the motor forward and reverse. You have to. So you put them in series with everything, all this junk. Look at the overload. Why do you think the overload is in series with all this chunk here? Because you need the motor to be protected from overload if it's going forward or if it's going reverse. If I grab this baby here and put it right here, now when you're going forward, you have you have an overload protection. When you're going reverse, you're on your own. Where's the motor coil on that? That's the motor. That's the motor. Where's the coil for the motor? Mm -hmm. You mean the contactor coil? Forward and reverse? These are the coil, the forward coil. This is the reverse coil that's going to drive these forward contacts and reverse contacts separate. The motor coil itself is, I don't know if you're talking about these here. This is where your motor is. The actual windings of the motor. So reverse forward. So let's say we're going to go forward, Spencer. You close this. Now you have one, uh, let's put the voltage here. I have 13,800 kilovolt here. And from this side, I decided to use 24 volt. See, Brad White is ground this time, 24 volt. Then I brought this, I brought 24 volt across this bit because close it. Now all, this is closed, all, all closed. So I have 24 volt. Now the, these, this is energized, this will close. And each one of these, bam, 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 close. Now my motor is going forward. DJ decided I hit forward and we move it reverse, or the function needed to go reverse. So look at the opposite now. When I, now I'm going to go reverse. The first thing you do when you go reverse is you close this. And by the way, these two are connected together. So when you close this, you open the forward. They are mechanically interlocking. They move together, OK? Mechanical air locking. So when I push this one, this I open that. When I open that, what happened, guys, to the contacts? This contact was closed, was open. Now it's closed. Now I close this one. I have 24 volt here. This will close, and my motor is going forward, and these will open, of course. <coughs> the green contacts are to prevent you from going forward and reverse on the motor and creating a, a two phase short circuit. So every time after it's energized, this one is open. Can you guys see that now, the way I'm going, this has to be open. Because this will open, right? You know, normally closed, when you energize R, it will open. So this motor will never go forward unless you stop going reverse. That's what the electrical interlocking and the mechanical interlocking is. Uh, but it's, no. gives you would need some uh, when you downtime. When you, yeah, when you'll be surprised, we did them in the motor. When you push the forward, it kicks back. The motor will kick back. Depending how big is the motor is, that's where the soft start becomes a big deal. If you reverse and, and forward, immediately forward the motor, the motor is going at full speed 1800. You want to reverse it. Yeah, it, it will kick. It, we did it in the motor. You see that the motor starts shaking and return all the way back. If it's loaded, obviously, you have to have soft start. That's where the VFD becomes very, very important, guys. VFDs can reverse and forward the motor w without getting that, that shake of that motor. These are good for smaller motors, that way of reversing them. If you get into bigger motors, forward and reverse uh, of a motor becomes a big deal. But Spencer, when you actually reverse it, you stop it. But momentarily, though, momentarily you stop it. Right? You killed it here. You killed the power here. Momentarily, though. Not enough. Not like 10 seconds to let it cool down. It, that's why it kick back so fast and go back. Magnetic field, reverse it, and start going the opposite direction. <clears throat> if you have an overload condition, what happened to this overload, guys? Open. And if, if this is open, nothing will run. Nothing will run. So this is your full voltage non-reversible. Full voltage, I'm sorry, full voltage reversible NEMA. Again, VFDs are not in this. We're coming, guys, for the VFDs. 
the VFDs will be in uh, in a different uh, topic coming on. Okay, so this is just going through the sequence of operation for it, my friends. So <clears throat> closing them. Look at the contacts now. Um, now in this case, can you guys see it? The motor is going forward, right? Because I pushed the forward. Everything is energized. Let's take the motor reverse. Now the motor is, look at that, when I energize this coil, the motor is going reverse. Everybody can see that, guys? I don't know if everybody can see how, what all of they're doing for the reverse and the forward is switching phase, this phase here. Can you guys see that come from here? And the other phase, so this is coming through this, and uh, phase, and here's another phase. These are the two phases that we're, they're switching. They're grabbing phase three and phase one and phase three and switching them. Phase one and phase three. Phase one and phase three. This is how they're reversing the motor, by switching phase one and phase three. And every time you switch them, you've got yourself a, a, a different rotation. Again, as a designer, guys, you probably wouldn't get to that level. Here's how they physically, mechanically are wired, Spencer. Um, they don't have to be this way, <clears throat> but it could be most of the time, most of the time, this is would be your, this is your be uh, NEMA, NEMA number five, say, and this is your full, voltage reversible and you're bringing power in as a matter of fact it's also covered all the way up to the terminal really and you can go all the way up to here and everything that you're doing everything that you see here is inside a box inside the box um, the push button are at the front of the box where you can push and start and stop a motor so basically all the stuff that you can see over here with the NEMAs like group as one NEMA uh, 5 full voltage reversible contactor. Any question, my friends? Any question about this? Mr. Bab, if I give you all these components, would you be able to wire them in the lab? You can. You can. Okay. I'm not sure I'm not okay. <laughs> I go there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the full voltage, the contact, forward and reverse. Anyway, if anybody wants to go there, we have a schematic classes, guys, that we teach and that we go in detail and all. Any question, my friends? Uh, Spencer being an electrical designer, all what you need to do is just understand it. The more you understand it, the better you will be. You would not be required to troubleshoot it. We teach classes how to troubleshoot these. What, what happened if whatever is not working? What would, where, where would be the issue if, if the system is not working? Well, how about if we start with the fuse here? The fuse screwed up, right? That's <laughs> start number one. Do we have fuse coming out? That's my start right here. If I measure the power in here, I see power over here, but that, but it's not working. I always start with that little fuse. Is the fuse blown? Any question, my friends, for volt NEMA number five, full voltage non-reversible? The last one that I have here for you, my friends, is um, this is from HVAC control system. HVAC control system. And if you look at this one, guys, this is a compressor and a condenser and all this good stuff, the power circuit. The power circuit, this is, uh, uh, well, it happened to be two phases, it could be two phases coming in here. And we have, um, we have coils and we have flow switch. When the flow switch energized, we have thermostat. We have the thermostat, guys. When the thermostat closes, this up R will close and then bam, bam my condenser will will, uh, will be up and running 
if, if there is a flow in the system, this will close, and this will also, these two contacts will close. So without getting into the schematics of it, um, a control system for uh, HVAC, for HVAC, I will bring to your attention, guy, what do you think that low pressure and high pressure are? What are these? Safety. You see, what do you think we, if you are, if you're compressing, if you're compressing air into or convincing it, <clears throat> what do you think that <clears throat> you're creating a bomb, right? If you don't control the amount of, 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 of compressed air in this, in, the, in this tank, it's going to explode at one time. So safety becomes a big deal. Look how they put low pressure and high pressure. High pressure is going to explode it. Low pressure is going to going to suck it. Yeah, it's going to be sucked in. So these are safety becomes a big, big, big deal. So when there's a flow in the system, this will energize. Compressor, this one will start. And also, if the thermostat calls for cold, this FR will energize so that what your compressor is running, your air conditioning is running. And that's, um, and as you can see, there's an overload here for both of them. Any question guys about this? Any question? And I know I don't do this in detail, but for us guys, uh, when it comes to the HVAC, one thing about the HVAC equipment, chillers, cooling towers, air handling units, you have to understand that the control part of this system is usually huge, usually done by the mechanicals and usually VFDs. All what they do, all this, all what we provided is, we provide them a VFD here, power in, power out, and that's as far as we can go with this uh, cooling tower, cooling tower. We bring the power to the VFD, so the VFD goes to the motor, and what happened in the VFD and how the VFD is interfaced with your laptop and monitored is a whole different story. Any question, my friends? Any questions? <clears throat> I want to give you, I have some time guys, I'm going to do one little example, one little example of MCC sizing, and then I'll be on, on, on because we're not here on Thursday, how to size an MCC, and by the way, how to size an MCC is exactly the same as bus weights, so I'm going to take one example, how to size an MCC, Mr. Urbab, so I'm switching track here, since we're talking about motors, I thought that would be a good time to size one MCC, because that's was on my things to do. And when you guys, being how troublemakers you are, you did not allow me to do it. Uh, okay, so let me let me guys do one example about sizing MCC. That has nothing to do. Well, it has really with what we're doing here, because it talks about motors. Here's an example: sizing MCC. What's an MCC, Jim? An MCC has an over convection device fuse or disconnect or circuit breakers and a contactor. See that magnetic contactor is all in one big bay. All these magnets, NEMAs, the NEMA that we were talking about guys, these are all in big box, six of them wrapped in one section. It's called an MCC. How do you size an MCC? Let me give you this example. Example number one, and I hope will be the last example. Um, Here's the, here's the load Spencer that I need to size an MCC for it. I have a 50 horsepower and I have a 60 horsepower and you guys write them the way I, I will write them because I will write the stuff here. And 100 horsepower and 125 horsepower. I have all these horsepower guys. <clears throat> um, I have all these horsepower, my friends, and I... Um, that I have, here's the number, I have three of these, and I have five of these, and I have seven of these, and I have, um, blah, 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 that will make it uh, nine of these. 
Nine of these. Okay, anybody has an issue with that? I have how many motors? Anybody can count them? I have seven. 24, thank you. 24 motors. I have 24 machines, motors, fed from MCC. Anybody has an issue with that? 24 of them fed, fed from an MCC. 24 of them fed from an MCC. The question for all of us guys in size and M, C, and C for this system. An MCC for this system. Okay? Size. Um, a motor controller for this system, a motor control system for this system. Uh, everything is three phase. All of them are three phase. Thank you. Are they three phase? So I'm going to give you a few things about the system here, guys, that you need to know. Number one, it's uh, three phase. So well, let's write them down here. So we're excited to know over furniture picture. Number one, it's three phase. And number two, give me a second, it's 484. This is all what you have. And we need to size the MCC, the feeder for the MCC, the over temperature device. Let me just write the stuff that we need to size for them. Um, what we need, I'm going to make uh, the calculation there. So let's. Uh, we're going to size MCC feeder, MCC size. Uh, here's, let's make the MCC. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to do my, uh, here's what I want to do for this MCC, guys. Here's my MCC sections. You say 24, 24 divided by 6 is what? 4. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So this most likely would be four sections, guys. Four sections like this. And I need to size the following. I need to size the MCC, the over temperature device that comes to, to the main section. Um, it's going to confuse you. Let me just draw. Here's the MCC. We're going to size the, the following. Number one. I need to size the MCC itself. That will be number one. Number two, the over temperature device, number two. Uh, number three is the feeder, number three, as we all got done. Number three, MCC feeder, uh, MCC. Okay, so these are the most important three things I want to size for this uh, MCC. This is my M. C and C. Any question guys about this? The one is uh, the MCC itself, the size of the MCC in amps. Okay. Any question guys? One more time. We're going to size an MCC and the feeder, the over temperature device for it, for a three phase 480 volt system with 24 motors and the horsepower of these motors are as follows. As follows. Okay, here's what we're gonna do, guys. Come, go from here. We're gonna go to 430.2, 430.250, table 430.250, and the full load current. Correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. The full load current for this one is gonna be three times. How many of them do I have? 65 amps. Okay. The same thing for this baby. I did these ones five. If I did it uh, wrong, guys, correct me, <coughs> since you guys are uh, smart here. And the, the second one, so I have um, seven <coughs> times uh, 124. And the third one, the third one, guys, I'm going to split it. See, I'm going to split it. What do you think? Which one is the largest? When we size it, when we nice size the MCC, guys, we take the largest MCC, the largest motor, Multiply it by 1.25 plus the full load current of all the other motors. So I split the last one. Anybody can tell me why I split it? 1.25 times um, times 156 equal. And so that's my first one. Then that will leave me with 8 times 156. Any question guys about what I did? All these, the beginning, these numbers are amps. 
The reason why it's split the 125 horsepower because it's the largest big fat baby, right? Can you guys see that? The largest motor, the largest motor, 125 horsepower motor. So I have nine of them. I took one and multiplied by 1.25 because that's my largest. And the other eight, the other eight, I multiplied them by the full load curves. Any question, Chanel, my friend? Any question about that? By the way, on the test on Friday, we're going to do the same thing except for bus waste. The same thing except for bus waste. All, the, all of them are three phase. Now, Brad, if you have, God forbid, you have a lighting load, a lighting load, three phase lighting load, you're going to feed it from the MCC. Take the KVA divided by 1.73, divide by the voltage, get you the three phase amp, and add it here as a three phase amp. As a three phase amp. Okay, any question, guys, where these numbers came from? Okay, so if you add them up, this is add. If you do the math and add them up, I came up with, what did I came up with, Chad? Uh, 2891. 2891M. Brad, did you come up with something like that? 2891M. 2891 2, amps. 2891 amps. Everybody see what we're doing, guys? We're adding the amps, except we took the largest, big, fattest boy, and we multiplied by 1.25, which happened to be one of these nine. 125. One of these nine 125. Any question, my friends? Any question about this? So I'm going to highlight this because that's where you guys are going to be using this amp for a lot of stuff here. <clears throat> Okay, can I move? Now, I don't know if you guys remember, I gave you sizes of MCC, if you remember, was it uh, 3-12, I believe? 3-13 or 3-12. I gave you sizes of MCC, typical from Color Hammer. Let me repeat them if you have not written them down. Please go to page 3-19 and 3-13 and write them down if you have not. 3-13. Write them somewhere next to the switch gears. That's what I have them. Huh? Did you guys get them? MCC, we have 600, 800, 1200, 1400, 1600, 2000, 2500, 3200, and 4,000. These are MCC sizes. Do me write them down? I want you to write them, guys. They're not there. I'll write them on the board. There you go. Let me write them down. MCC, MCC sizes based on color hammer. You can go, you can go to 600 amp, 600, 800 amp. Uh, 1200 amp, 1600 amp, and what else? 2000 amp, 2500 amp, 3200 amp, and 4000 amp. These are typical sizes from Cutler Hand. Right. Typical sizes from color hammer, guys. Color hammer. Typical sizes. Okay. So write these down if you don't have them. Typical. Give or give or take. These are typical sizes. Typical sizes. And these are the horizontal bosses, guys. They call them the horizontal boss. Yes. No, no, that's why I want you guys to write them. Yeah. If I am to suggest where to write them, Brooks, write them in 3 13, right next to the switch gears. That's what I always have because they're similar to the switch gears and switch boards. And these are MCC sizes. MCC
Okay? Now, let's go size it. Let's go answer question number one. Number one, we need MCC size. For MCC size, that doesn't even look like a size. MCC size. Uh, Brooks, my friend, we came up with 289 one amp. Take it to, I'm going to call this is 3, uh, what is it, 12 dash, 3 dash 13. 3 dash 13, D wall. This is where you guys are going to get right in there. And my next standard, according to this, guys, is what? 3200. My next standard, according to this, is um, my MCC is going to be 3200 amp. My next standard is going to be my 3200 amp. Right? Everybody can see that straightforward. 3200 amp. Number two. Number two is the overcurrent protection device for the MCC. Overcurrent protection device for the MCC. <clears throat> overcurrent protection device for the MCC. For the overcome protection device for the MCC, guys, I do the same thing. I take 2891. Set this time, I take it to NEC 240.6. What's my next overcome protection device? What's my next overcome protection device? 3000. So my next overcome protection device is 3000 and my bus weighs 3200. Is there any issue there? The, the buses inside it is bigger than overcome protection device. That's fine. So I have a 3000 amp, <clears throat> 3000 amp overcome protection device in 3200. Here's where question, Jim, that you can do. I can make the overcome protection device like the 3200. You can because they're adjustable. For all practical reasons, I want you guys to stick with what the code says, 3,000, 3,000. <coughs> Excuse me. The last thing, number three, is feeder. Feeder, I always say match over current protection device, always. So 3,000 amp. How many runs? I have 10 runs. I decided to do 10 runs. Divide by 10, that gives you three, 300 amp. Take this one to 310.16. And if I did this one right, it's going to be three conductors, 350. Three conductors, 350 KC and M. And don't forget that we, we always see how many sets, guys. 10. Sets of 10 sets of three conductors, 350 kcm. What happened to the neutral? We calculate the neutral in a second, the same way like we calculate the neutral for everything else. Any question guys about this? That's it. The, the really the most important, everything else here, we just done it with panels, exactly like any other panel. Everything else. We've done it with the pens. The only thing I want to emphasize is how to find the actual size. And then over next overcome tissue device size that match match the conductors to the overcome tissue device. Why don't we the size of the conductor itself and you know one point two five on each one of them? We already did that, didn't we? One point two five times the largest. Oh, yeah, that's what we always do. For uh, remember how we we size if we have a feeder feed multiple motors, we take to size the feeder. You take the largest over the largest amp motor, multiply by one point two five plus all the others. You don't multiply them all by one point two five. Don't you guys feed each one one point two five and then one point seven five on each feed and then feed according to the, the each line on each motor? If they're all motors, like the, my example, you take the for the feeder, you take the largest overcome protection device, multiply by 1.25, add them all up. Any question, guys, about the phases? Now, if you need a neutral, let me just tell you guys about MCCs. Most of the time, you don't need an, a neutral with MCC. You do not need a neutral with MCC. 
But suppose this this MCC was your service, so you need a neutral there. Let's just go calculate the neutral. I'm going to go three. Three, the same thing. Peter neutral. This is how I do it. I take the three thousand. Remember the three thousand amp. The first two hundred. What do we do with it? Leave it alone. And then you take three three zero zero minus two hundred and multiply this by point seven. Okay, I did not do that. So we have uh, 2800, right, times 0.7 equal plus 200, equal. I have 2160. Anybody came up with something different? 2160 amp. Anybody came up with something different? So these are the amps that I can use for my neutral. Now I have no other option, DJ, except to parallel how many? 10. I already, I'm stuck with 10. So I have my 2160 divided by 10, no other option. So that would give me 216 amp. If you take this one to table 310.16 under 75 degree power. I don't have a uh, 4 watt. How many conductors? One conductor, 4 watt. And how many sets of these? 10 sets of Thank you, Brad. Ten sets of one conductor for us. Then neutral. Any question, guys? Really, exactly, guys. Like bus <laughs> way, like we did for the bus way. No identical. Now, if I don't want to do that, but if I ask you to go find the conduit, can you find the conduit? Yeah. So I want to draw one, just one little thing for the conduit. So here's my phase A. My phase B, my phase C, and here's my neutral. And I'm going to use the conduit to look something like this. Okay? And if you guys remember, these are, these conductors are three conductor number, what was the number of these? 350, 350 KCM, THHN. And this baby here is one conductor number four out. One conductor number four out. Can you size a conduit, EMP conduit, to fit these? I hope so. You go to, we did the same calculation. You can size an EMP conduit. How many of them do I need? Ten of these. Ten. So you'll probably end up with four, three and a half, four inch EMP conduit. Ten of them side by side. You guys remember when we went to Boston Scientific, how they had all these cables? That's exactly what they, what they did. Any question, guys? Any question about that? I trust that you guys know how to do size the conduit for this, because we didn't do that. And I trust you know how to size the grounding electrode conductor and the bonding jumper for it. By the way, for grounding and bonding work, we're coming with a really good example um, next week or the week after. That's you will learn more than you need to know about bonding and grounding. Okay, the last thing I want to show you guys is a cross section of this, and then I'll let you go eat. Here's how this MCC is going to look like if I can practice my my MCC skills. This is how your MCC is going to look like. How many sections do we have? We have one, two, three, four, three, four. And this is how they're going to go, guys. Uh, one, two, three, four. There you go here. There you go. And probably it looks like something. So one, two, three, four, four starters, depending on the horsepower, most of it, depending on the horsepower. Um, we have 24 divided by, I need one, two, three, four, I need one more. Uh, five, six, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is how it's gonna look like, your MCC, most likely, again. And it's gonna have um, nine motors, how many, so is this uh, one, two, three, four, five, times one, two, three, four, 20, 24? We don't have enough. One, two, three, four, five. I need another one, six here. I want to make it at the bottom. 
fits. That's what I wanted. Right, I'm going to make it way at the bottom. Well, I can't erase. You guys can't. So here you go. Do I have enough now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 24. 24 more fish. 24 more fish. And each one of these cubicles here is going to have basically these, each one of these cubicles is going to have a, a motor. So this is, uh, we have nine of them, what was it? 100 and 125 horsepower um, and all the weight. So all these are going to be, I'm not going to write, but you guys can do the magic, imagine it. It's going to look, your MCC is going to look like this. 125. Uh, 125 horsepower, 125 horsepower, 125 horsepower. People will laugh at me because probably you can't fit 125 in this, but 125 horsepower and 125 horsepower. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you still have 125 horsepower and 125 horsepower. You have a nine here. And then the rest of them guys go all over here. 24. Motor control set. Motor control set. When you guys went to Boston Scientific and you saw them, we showed you the, uh, it's going to look like, but please don't laugh at the 125. 125 will take at least half, of, half a section. Right? 125 will take half a section. Just I'm simplifying it. Usually you can put six starters, six starters in one cube like this. And that's what is it? What did he say? I think it's one inches by 20 by 72 high. That's one section. And, but again, I can't emphasize 125 horsepower will take half a section. So you need more than that. I'm just simplifying this, the format. It will take more than half a section 125. I'm just simplifying it just to get you an idea. Believe it or not, Camille, my friend, when we did, when I did wastewater treatment plants, you might laugh. Why, why would we do something like this, guys? You need to be able to tell the uh, mechanical engineers and especially the architects how big of a room you need for your electrical room right you need real estate so in in order to find the square foot area for your panel for your MCC you need to know you need to know how many of these sections do you need here's what we did two things either the software GE you guys have a software dollar hammer has software really you can plug in all the information that I've just showed you see the all this info here you can plug in all this info, the horsepower, the voltage, and how many of them you do. And guess what? The software will tell you, um, come up with an amp. It will come up with this. It will come up with this size for you. And also, it will come up with, um, not the conductor. It will come up with the physical mechanical layout. No question asked. We've done it Cutler Hammer and GE and all other manufacturers. If you don't want to do it, Mr. Bu, give the information to Jim from uh, Jim Rasmussen from GE, and they'll be able to lay out the actual layout of your panel with labels on them, and you can import it into CAD, and up you go. So, any question, my friend? The last thing I'm going to say is an MCC is a panel that has an overcompletion device as well as the starter, the NEMA starters, or the DFDs, or the soft start. Four starters that we talked about. Or the three, the NEMA, Soft Start, and VFD, all or some of them, all of them could be in an MCC. Could be in an MCC. Any question, my friends? Can you talk, uh, go back to the first calculation? Okay. Of the motor? I'm done. Go eat. Go ahead, Mr. Bob. There you go. Back. Back one more? Yeah. Back. Back one more? I don't know why it happened. Two eight five two. Am I wrong? Or? Two eight five two. Did you multiply by one point two five here? Oh no, yeah, that's right. That's, that's why. Right. You didn't multiply by one point two five. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thank you. Let me just uh, stop my uh, recording here. Oh, I wasn't recording to start with. Oh no, I was recording. Oh great. So...